Hello, my name is Matthias Magdowski. I'm a scientific co-worker and researcher at the Otto von Gehrig University of Magdeburg in Germany. And in this short video, I would like to give a brief virtual laboratory tour through our reverberation chamber. And I would try to briefly explain what electromagnetic compatibility or short EMC is. A typical electromagnetic incompatibility, let's say. Some EMC problem that everyone knows is you have your cell phone and I have an old GSM cell phone here and you call someone or you get a call and you are close to some uh, computer or some speakers or some radio receiver and then you hear this disturbance in the speaker um, if it's close to the speaker itself or close to the cable and if you quit the call then the noise is gone. So what happens there is that the cell phone radiates some electromagnetic wave. Um, I have a nice schematic here that explains this. In, in case of the cell phone, it's something like 850, 900 megahertz. And then the cell phone pulse modulates the signal. So it switches the signal on and off. This will be transmitted by the antenna. And then the cables attached to the speaker, they will pick the signal up. Every cable that you have everywhere also acts as an antenna. And then the speaker is some active speaker, so there's an amplifier in there with nonlinear elements, diodes, and transistors, and they will demodulate the signal. So what you hear is not the 800, 900 megahertz, of course, of the um, electromagnetic waves of the cell phone itself. You hear the shape how the cell phone switches the signal on and off. This is the, the disturbing noise that you hear in the speaker. And this is a classical EMC problem, some coupling that um, should not happen. And the idea of such laboratories here is to replicate such effects. So we could put some device under test in here, like the, like the speaker, um, and irradiate on this with electromagnetic waves and check it for immunity. Or we could also put some device under test in here, let it radiate and measure with some antenna the emissions of this device under test. And for this, we of course need to shield ourselves from the environment. Um, to not to, to be able to only measure the emissions from this device on test and not all radio stations and um, cell phone base stations and Wi-Fi networks and so on from the surrounding. And at the same time, if we irradiate onto some device on test here, we only want to potentially disturb this device on test and not um, disturb half of the city of Magdeburg. So we need to, we need to shield ourselves from the environment and the shielding works with methods. So the floor that I'm standing on, the walls, the ceiling, everything around in this room is made out of metal. Also the doors. One of these doors, if I go over here, uh, one of these doors is of course in the background is uh, open. Otherwise, of course, I would not have a cell phone reception and so on in here. And these metal walls, they act like a mirror for electromagnetic waves. So all the waves coming from the outside are mirrored back, which is nice. And all the waves that we create here on the inside, they will be also mirrored back by the walls. And so now if we would take an antenna like this one here, um, I will explain a little bit more about such an antenna later on. If we take some antenna and let it create a wave inside this room, wave will travel through space, uh, through, the, uh, through the room, and will be reflected by the metal walls. And so. It will travel back and will be reflected by this wall and it will bounce back and forth. So you get lots of traveling waves that are superposed with each other. So you get standing waves. It's a little bit like if you play a guitar, if you uh, pull the string of the guitar, you create a wave, it will run in both directions. The string is fixed at the end. So the wave will be reflected and you have waves bouncing back and forth along the string of the guitar. Same happens here with the field. And what you get is you get nodes, you get points where there's no field strength at all, where the, where the field is not oscillating, and you get anti nodes where the field is oscillating a lot. And um, so we get points in space with quite high field strengths, we get points in space with quite small field strengths. And even if the field is not visible, um, I can somehow make it audible once again with the speaker here. So now I will attach my microphone uh, to this cup here, which is essentially my, my microphone holder and shortly go outside, turn off, turn on some signal generator and I will 
also insert um, some signal with 200 megahertz roughly, so 1.5 uh, meter of wavelengths, which is also amplitude modulated, like, like in this schematic here with some sinusoidal uh, 1 kilohertz tone. So what you will hear is now a 1 kilohertz sine tone and I will switch it on and I will be right back. Okay, and so what you hear now is a kind of disturbing noise, this one kilohertz tone. And now if I take the cable of the speaker and move the cable around here in space, you hear, you should hear that signal that the volume changes, the volume increases and decreases. And I will shortly switch it off for a second. So these changes in the volume, they are because we have this standing waves and we have points where the field strength is higher and we have points in space where the field strength is smaller. And you could, this, uh, by the way, the same thing happens uh, at your home in your microwave oven. So the, the facility that I'm standing in is not much more than a large microwave oven. At home, your microwave oven is much smaller and uh, the wavelengths there is also much smaller because the frequency is uh, much higher. The frequency that your microwave oven is operating with is 2.4 gigahertz, so it's 12 centimeter wavelengths. And you have the same problem with the standing wave pattern there. So you have points where the field strength is very high and the food would burn quickly. And you have these nodes where there's no field at all, food stays cold. So what your microwave oven uh, Manufacturer does, he, he, there's a turntable built in so that the food is moving around in this standing wave pattern field and gets evenly hot. And by the same, um, in the same manner, we could also do some immunity test here. I will switch it on once again and like move our equipment around in space. But this would not be very practical. Uh, because there are cables typically attached to your device on a test. So you, you don't want to move this, you don't want to rotate it around. So now the, the, the next idea is like in this saying, if the, if the prophet cannot go to the mountain, the mountain needs to go to the prophet. So we leave this device on a test here in place, in position, and we move the field around. So how can we move the field around? by changing the reflection of the waves. And for this, we have this large metal object over there um, with, with large metal plates. So waves will be reflected at these plates. And if the plates change their orientation and change their position, we change the reflection of the waves and we can change the standing wave pattern in here. And these standing waves in electromagnetics are called modes. So this device is there to change the modes, to steer the modes. So that's why it's called a mode stirrer. And the whole facility is then called a mode stirred chamber or a reverberation chamber because you have a reverberant field. You have lots of echoes of the field reflections bouncing back and uh, forth from the walls. So what I will do now is I will once again attach my microphone to my improvised uh, microphone holder here, this cup, uh, turn on the speaker, uh, go outside and turn on the mode, um, uh, turn on the speaker and then turn on the mode steerer. So I'll be back in a second.
I will once again switch it off because the one kilohertz sine tone is just a little annoying. But what you could hear now in this recording is that the volume also changes and increases and decreases. And this is because this mode stereo changes the field and moves this minima and maxima, these nodes and anti nodes through space. And uh, therefore, we get a different field strengths now at the position where this cable is located and different um, volumes of the tone of the demodulated signal at the speaker. And this is more or less how such a reverberation chamber works. And this is also how, would, how we would do some typical immunity test inside here. Place some device on a test in there insert some field and then check for different positions of this mode stereo so that there is a certain average and maximum field strength that we reach at the position of this device on a test. And you could also do an immunity test there, put something here and let it radiate. And then um, it does not matter in which direction it will radiate. Signals will anyhow and always be reflected by the walls and at some position uh, will be picked up by, um, by some antenna, uh, once again, like this antenna here. And this is then also a very robust and nice way to do emission measurements because you measure the total radiated power of your device on a test. It does not matter what is the radiation pattern of your device on a test. Will it, will it have very narrow beams? Um, it does not matter in which direction it radiates, you will always measure the total radiated power and you don't need to rotate the device on a test. Um, you just need to rotate the stirrer and get uh, from the stirrer the nice field statistics that we want to have inside such a mode stereo chamber or reverberation chamber.